that are incorporated in it. Um, <coughs> you have the source of the destination report, sequence number, acknowledgement number, TCP header length, uh, four bits which are unused, um, eight bit, uh, one bit flags each, uh, window size field, a checksum, urgent pointer, options, and the data that follows. So every TCP segment begins with the segment header, um, and with the source of support and destination port fields, uh, they identify the local endpoints of the connection. Um, with with the the host is IP port and the TCP port, which is a 16-bit um, identifier. Together, those make a unique endpoint identifier, and with both endpoints you can make an identifier for the complete connection. And, um, that identifier is called the 5 tuple because what it consists of is the protocol, the source IP, the source port, the destination IP, and the destination port. Uh, as Mingyu said, uh, the uh, segments have the sequence number, which, is, which identifies the order of the bytes. And the importance of this is so that each byte is kept in order, so that when it's reassembled, uh, it, it'll stay in order. And the acknowledgement number is, uh, it specifies the, the byte that's uh, expected to be received next. Um, and what this implicitly implies is that every byte previous to the acknowledgement number has been received. And this is called cumulative acknowledgement. Um, the TCP header length uh, consists of how many 32-bit uh, words are contained in the header. Um, the 32-bit words are what comprises of the options field in the header. Um, so essentially what this is used for is to say how big the options field is, how big the header is, uh, based off that, and where the data starts after the options field. Um, uh, TCP has four bits which just aren't used when it was first created 30 years ago. Um, six bits were reserved and still four bits still aren't used for whatever reason. Um, uh, and then there's a, a series of <coughs> one bit flags. Um, the first one, the first two are, are sort of used in conjunction. You have the explicit uh, congestion notification, which is which is set from the sender host to the receiver to notify that there's congestion on the connection, and then the receiver will respond with the congestion window reduce uh, bit set to notify that the first sender that they're reducing the size of their congestion window. Um, Next, we have our urgent pointer flag, uh, and what this does is it, it keeps track of bytes within <laughs> the connection that will encounter urgent data, not its offset from the current sequence number, and this is used in lieu of interrupt messages, but it's not used that often. Um, we have our acknowledgement flag. And what that does is it, it validates that the acknowledgement number is valid. And this is used in conjunction with our synchronization flag to um, for accept for connection requests and accepting connections. Uh, the syn flag is sent with every first uh, TCP segment header um, from one connection to the other to synchronize uh, data between the two. And um, with every, with every outgoing uh, TCP segment, there's a SIN one and an acknowledgement. Is the acknowledgement flag is zero, and the the host receiving that will respond with the acknowledgement flag set to one, no, uh, signif signifying that it has acknowledged and it, and accepted the connection. Um, uh, next, we have our push. Flag, which is uh, it signifies that uh, this, the data has 
has to be pushed immediately to the application or the user application <coughs> um, rather than being buffered. And lastly, there's our there's the reset bit, which if there's a crash or a problem with the connection, this will this will be sent and the connection will be aborted and attempt to reset. And lastly, we have our final bit, which uh, a host will send once it's done uh, transmitting data. It has no more data to transmit. Um, uh, the window size, it, it tells how many bytes may be sent starting at the byte that's acknowledged from uh, the receiving host. Uh, that, and then another part of TCP second header is a checksum, which uh, indicates that a data based off the checksum function which checksums the header, the data, and the central studio header. And this is just used for uh, data integrity, just so it's more reliable. There's not any anomalies. Um, and then lastly, we have our options field, which uh, it provides a way to add like extra facilities that are not <laughs> covered by the regular header. And, um, some of those include uh, uh, maximum segment size, which uh, specifies the maximum segment size that can, or the max, yeah, pretty much that's self explanatory. Uh, uh, window scale, um, and what this option allows is it allows senders and receivers to negotiate how, how big the window size, the window size field, the scale factor of it. Um, a timestamp option, which allows um, timestamps to be sent with every <laughs> packet, and this is used um, uh, to, this is used uh, to track how much time, ground trip time, and for uh, tracking loss of packets. Um, and the reason why timestamp is important is because uh, protected, uh, PWS stands for protected against wrapped sequence numbers, and that's that's a, a scheme which is based off timestamps for discarding old timestamps to prevent uh, problems. And then lastly, uh, we have our selective acknowledgement option, and what this does is uh, it allows uh, a receiver to specifically acknowledge what data it has. Uh, that has not been sent uh, after subsequent data has been sent. Uh, the reason why this is used because the acknowledgement number it just uh, it just signifies the the next byte in order. It doesn't acknowledge uh, bytes that have not been that have not arrived in subsequent data that has come after it. So it's for uh, more accurate uh, data tracking. Now I'll talk about a TCP connection establishment. Um, as many of you said, the connections are full, full duplex. So uh, uh, connections are full duplex. So uh, that means that can travel both ways uh, simultaneously. And the name of the connection is the means of connection is uh, three-way handshake. Uh, say in this case, host two could be a, uh, your server and host one could be your client. And um, uh, essentially, host two executes a listen primitive, which means one of the processes is passively awaiting a request to connect. And then host one executes a connect primitive where it specifies the IP address and port that it's uh, wanting to connect to, the maximum TCP segment size, and uh, user data, which could be like a password of sorts. Um, uh, and then it sends the TCP segment with the send it on and add bit off. Um, so uh, if there's a process that's listening at the port that at the receiver sends, then that host two will accept the segment and then it will reply with its own acknowledgement 
movement back. And that will officially establish the connection. Alright, and so here we have a spinach. Um, this one sends the first uh, segment, and we, it sends its sequence number, and the send flag is set. Um, those two responds with its own sequence number and an acknowledgement. Uh, number for the next byte is expecting for post one, <coughs> the act, so the act is set, and then lastly post one uh, responds with an acknowledgement to host two, um, and this shows simultaneous uh, connections when they're both uh, trying to connect to one another at the same time.